Hello everyone. So I welcome you all to this module 16. In this, we are going to cover SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. Well, this is under the course of UN SDGs. Yeah. So let's see some uh, facts and figures. In 2019, 22% of the world's youth were not engaged in either education, employment or training. 22%. Well, that's a big number if you see, it's more than, you know, like a one-fifth, you know, little lesser than, uh, you know, one-fourth, right? So it's a huge percentage. These many percentage of, you know, like youth, you know, this category of people, you know, they were not either in education or in employment or even in some kind of training. That means they were living idle and uh, that's the most, you know, dangerous situation for any society because if they are not engaged in some work, okay, where else, you know, they will put up, you know, like their... Uh, uh, brains too, right? And uh, yeah, so channeling them into a constructive, you know, like a ways of, uh, you know, like a uh, productivity, whether, you know, like for, you know, like learning something, you know, like, uh, or maybe, you know, skilling, you know, or even like using, you know, their skills and abilities to some use, okay? If, if that is not happening, then there is a big problem, right? It may become uh, problematic for the rest of the, you know, like a society, right? So, a cohesive, you know, like environment and a mechanism where, you know, one needs to engage, you know, like this fertile, you know, like minds, you know, like a people, you know, uh, in some productive uses is very essential. First of all, you have to make use of them, you know, so that, you know, they become productive to the society, to their you know, own families, to themselves. Okay. And secondly, as a kind of you know, like a responsible, uh, you know, like this thing, they should also get, uh, you know, like some engagement, you know, individually to fulfill, you know, like their own needs of, uh, you know, like working, you know, like learning, education, right, you know, all of those things. So, in both ways, it is essential, you know, for the individual also, for the household also, and for the rest of the society and countries also, right. So, decent work and economic growth, this is where, you know, like this SDG 8 comes, where, you know, like the system is able to, you know, like engage, you know, its population into constructive, you know, like engagements, right? These are the constructive engagements. You know, everybody should go to, you know, like a school, college and university, you know, for edu educating themselves so that, you know, they can become ready to understand the world, to work with the world, you know, to produce, you know, like something on their own or with somebody, right? in any format, you know, whichever they like, you know, whichever it suits to their temperament and aptitude, right? Yeah, so <clears throat> that is the goal, you know, like to promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment and decent work for all, so that everybody is engaged, everybody is productive, you know, everybody is kind of busy with their own works, right? Or, uh, yeah, so that is the overall this thing. Well, why is it needed? Well, a little bit we know, but let's see uh, what is the systemic, you know, like a uh, approach on this thing. Sustained and inclusive economic growth can drive progress, create decent jobs for all and improve living standards. Okay. So, since today's economy, if you see, is based on, you know, like earning, right. So, you need to put your, your efforts in some place so that you can earn, you know, like some livelihood out of that and then you can improve your living standards. Okay. You can live nicely, you can eat, eat like, you know, good things, you can, you know, like, wear, you know, good clothes, you know, you can have a better, you know, like, a habitat, better, you know, housing facility, right? And even more than that, you can, you know, like, give the, you know, like, same kind of environment to your, you know, like, kids and children and other family members, right? And overall, if you see, if it happens with everyone, you know, everyone grows, everyone's living standards improves. So, even, uh, okay, so even before the outbreak of COVID-19, one in five countries, home to billions of people living in poverty, were likely to see per capita incomes decline in 2020 because of the pandemic, you know, the huge, uh, you know, like a losses of the job, you know, huge, you know, like a disruption to the regular flow of society, whether it was like a manufacturing, production, services, you know, like there was a huge, uh, you know, uh, you know, abrupt, you know, like a disruption. 
Now, the economic and financial shocks associated with the pandemic, such as disruptions to the industrial production, financial market volatility, and rising insecurity are derailing the already tepid economic growth and compounding heightened risk from other factors. Okay. So, these are the things you can see, you know, be, which become, uh, you know, like essential, you know, if this thing comes into the being. Well, what does decent work means then? You know, what is work and what is decent work? So, well, well work we know, like a... What is decent work? Decent work means opportunities for everyone to get work that is productive and delivers a fair income. Okay, so two factors being productive that the work is productive. Okay, something you know like some value is you know like a getting generated and it delivers a fair income. So fair you know like that word if you see is an interesting word over here which uh, because in the world <coughs> there are a number of disparities. In the coming SDGs also we will, you know, like a, uh, see, you know, when there is an unequal, you know, like distribution of wealth, you know, unequal distribution of opportunities, resources and stuff. Okay, so that's, that's not fair, right? Everybody should get, you know, like a fair share of, uh, you know, like anything and everything, right? So that's why, you know, like this, you know, like a point, you know, mentions over here is, is not just work, it's a decent work where, you know, you are productive enough for your employer, for the organization for which you are working, plus yourself also, right? You even should be productive for, you know, like their own growth and development also. Plus, uh, they should get a fair income. Se fair income, a security in the workplace, yeah, it is guaranteed. It's not that, you know, like your job is vulnerable, you know, any moment, you know, you can be fired and all of this. It puts you in a, like a very uh, mental, you know, like a pressured uh, situation, right? So that uh, job security at workplace and social protection for families. Social protection includes, you know, like a healthcare, infrastructure, you know, like education, you know, like a such basic things like, you know, like water supply, electricity supply and all of those things. So that is, you know, social protection where, you know, like a such things are kind of you know, taken care of. Better prospects for personal development and social integration. Yeah. So it's not just you are working for somebody, you yourself, you know, should also grow and develop, you know, apart from, you know, like earning your financial, you know, like a monetary livelihood, right? A continued lack of decent work opportunities, insufficient investments and under consumption led to an erosion of the basic social contract underlying democratic societies that all must share in progress. So in the absence of, you know, like this, you know, a number of things can happen, right? So. Yeah, so that's why it is essential, you know, to go for, you know, like a decent working opportunities, creating decent working opportunities. How many people are unemployed? The pandemic is expected to have a devastating impact on global unemployment. Yeah, so we saw like a huge disruption in the society and definitely when, you know, like uh, working opportunities were closed, you know, the work opportunities were also closed, you know, for the people and earning opportunities subsequently were also closed, right? So direct and devastating impact because if once uh, like, you know, the person is unemployed, you know, he loses his, uh, you know, like or her, you know, like employment, you know, like opportunity, then where the hell, you know, like he or she is going to go, right? That's a very kind of a uh, like weird situation because no other new opportunity is also not coming up in the market because the whole market in a, in a as you see, is, is kind of, you know, gets disrupted and, you know, comes to an abrupt halt, right? And that halt, you know, can be more disastrous for the lower income actually, you know, groups because they're earning on daily basis. They do not have, you know, like a, for example, you know, reservoirs of wealth, right? Or maybe a collection of, you know, like a, a huge, you know, huge sum which, you know, they can uh, keep on spending even if they're unemployed and all that. They, they may be having like a very little, you know, like a savings, right? So, how to manage in that kind of situation. According to estimates from the International Labour Organization, ILO, global working hours could drop by 14% in the second quarter of 2020. This is equivalent to approximately 400 million full-time workers doing a 48-hour work week. The eventual increase in global unemployment over 2020 will depend on how effectively policy measures preserve existing jobs and boost labor demand once the recovery phase begins. More than one in six young people have stopped working since 
the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, while those who remain employed have seen their working hours cut by 23 percent. Yeah. So either the whole job was lost or working hours were also reduced. Okay. So you see, uh, 23 percent, you know, like working hours, you know, were cut. You know, close to, for example, like uh, maybe roughly around one fourth, right? And uh, subsequently it translates into the you know like a earning uh, reduction also in the same proportion, right? Tourism is one of the economic sectors most affected by the COVID-19 pandemic due to the closure of borders, travel bans, lockdown measures, you know, etc. So you know, like a tourism industry, if you see, you know, is a very much dependent you know like an industry on others on the influx of you know people from around places maybe you know like a uh, national travel like international travel like you know like people you know from one part of the uh, you know country you know traveling to you know like some other part of the country or maybe a place or maybe a city or maybe a site of interest right and in turn they end up you know like a spending you know like a things and the people who are offering you know like those uh, you know like a tourism based you know like services you know they end up uh, you know like earning you know like some livelihood out of that and covid actually caused you know a huge sudden disruption you know in this whole you know activity of uh, you know like a tourism it came to a complete halt because there was a sudden announcement of closure of borders national borders you know travel bans travel blanks not just uh, internationally but even intranational also like uh, for the first time in the whole history of our country also you know like indian railways were stopped you know all the state transport services were stopped right even personal vehicle you know like a transportation you know uh, movement was also stopped right nobody was allowed to move on move on the road you know bearing you know like only essential and critical care you know like a facilities and uh, stuff okay rest of the things were uh, you know kind of you know like a closed right it, the whole you know like a country went into the lockdown you know lockdown means there is no movement of any sort right so tourism was the you know like a most badly you know like a uh, impacted you know like industry you know industrial sector you know uh, out of uh, you know like covid 19 right and uh, we have some examples because uh, some few countries whose uh, economy is mostly dependent on uh, tourism you know their whole economy actually came to a, you know like a sudden you know and uh, abrupt halt if you must know you know our uh, uh, very unique uh, nice neighbor you know like sri lanka okay they also their country also you know went into the lockdown uh, you know since the closure of international you know like a borders you know and travel right and their economy has suffered you know like a very badly okay and uh, till like you know few months ago there was uh, you know like a big you know disruption and the government was actually brought down right and there was a chaos on the road you know like a extremely short supply of resources right and even basic you know like things such as milk you know uh, and other you know like essentials okay which puts everybody in uh, danger as a neighbor uh, you know like we are also concerned and uh, i am proud to say the government of india and many other like neighboring countries and international governments they came forward to help you know like a country uh, survive you know like uh, this uh, catastrophic situation and i wish them uh, like you know they they required uh, very soon Right? But if, if you see as an industry, if you are dependent just on one, because there are a lot of learnings, you know, from such episodes, right? So what if, uh, you know, like something happens of this sort or maybe some, some other sort, right? You know, what happens to your whole economy, right? So this is where, uh, you know, it calls for, you know, like developing, you know, like this resilience, right? Because in, 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 in case of any, like, you know, like a such, you know, like a risks in future, you know, you can take care of your, you know, like a country, your own economy, your people's, you know, like earning abilities and, you know, like employment abilities and etc. Right. So, that is the concern. Depending upon when travel restrictions are lifted and national borders reopen, international travel arrivals in 2020 may decrease by 60 to 80 percent compared with 2019. Huge disruption. What can we do to fix these issues? Providing youth the best opportunity to transition to a decent job calls for investing in education and training in higher, uh, highest possible quality, providing youth with skills that match, you know, like the labor market demands, giving them access to social protection and basic services, regardless of their contract type. 
as well as leveling the playing field so that all aspiring youth can attain productive employment regardless of their gender income level or socio economic background yeah so youth you know like must be engaged in uh, like some uh, you know like opportunity you know, like areas of education or training you know or skilling you know so that they are ready for the market you know whatever there is you know like what type of you know like a demand in the market you know they should be able to you know like uh, fulfill that okay then your value actually you know like increases in the market right so that is the you know like a very simple uh, logic demand and supply yeah and giving them social protection so that you know they are not vulnerable you know that uh, vulnerability one has to like address a country has to address you know for its uh, citizens you know because in case uh, something goes wrong wrong right right now also if you see there is you know a sort of recession going on in the international market and a lot of it companies you know software companies uh, consultancy companies you know they are laying off their employees in thousands of numbers right that's a huge uh, you know like a impacting thing for all of those people you know who are getting rendered you know like unemployed and their families right so this should not happen in uh, such a way because you know uh, they are you know like a qualified they are skilled you know they have been working for a while and suddenly they are on the road right so that puts them into a very much vulnerable situation you know where they will find it very hard to accommodate and uh, continue with their everyday life right it it puts them in the, the you know like even the future of their uh, you know kids and other family members at stake right so there should be policies to you know protect you know, like their in, uh, their interest this is what you know like a social protection actually means you know because your well being your uh, sustenance should not be actually market dependent well your earning can be but your survival should not be market dependent because if your survival is market dependent nobody is going to survive right it's very catastrophic situation you know if somebody is not able to you know like uh, fulfill you know like very basic necessities of life and survival right so that is the point we are talking about with these goals you know like that must be actually taken care of governments can work to build dynamic sustainable innovative and people centered economies yes yeah. so currently actually if you see the economic model is you know like a, a profit centric okay so it ends up compromising on any other you know like a concern for example you know like environment why the environment you know got so much disturbed you know why it has come to you know such a catastrophic situation and situation of imbalance where you know like we we are looking at a kind of a collapse of the whole you know like a climate as a like you know a continuing phenomena is is because you know like uh, for the profit making you know like a uh, things you know they did not cared you know much to safeguard the environment okay and same goes for the human society as well you know some people you know like some entities they prefer you know like a profit above you know the human well being okay the moment it goes it is not definitely not a people centered economy right so the people the economy should be must be people centered that's what you know like sdgs actually propose right promoting youth employment and women's economic empowerment in particular decent work for all so this is what you know like i, I perhaps you know now you are, you have understood you know this is what uh, you know like precisely it means you know what is decent work right implementing adequate health and safety measures and promoting supportive working environments are fundamental to protecting the safety of workers especially relevant for health workers and those providing essential services for more details here let's see some facts and figures before covid 19 global economic growth was slowing down already 2% gdp per capita growth between 2010 to 18 and in 19 it was registered as 1.5% okay that means it was gradually coming down okay slowly but yes it was coming down but covid 19 accelerated you know like that downfall uh, let's see uh, gdp per capita is going down the world faces the worst economic recession since the great depression you know gdp per capita expected to decline by 4.2% in 2020 decline you know that rate is at 4.2% during the pandemic 1.6 billion workers in the informal economy risk losing their livelihoods you know. 
so this is that informal economy well software industry and you know like a service sector so they are still you know like a, a formal economic sectors but there are you know like a not so much you know like organized or well formatted or well structured you know like a sectors also or group of people also who are rendering their services you know like or working you know for earning you know like some livelihood you know in an informal you know like a setting right so they end up for example you see this illustration you know the person who is selling you know some kind of snack on the street okay that person definitely is you know represents you know like a part of uh, informal economy right because he or she may not be you know registered to some organization he doesn't you know gets you know like a perks and benefits and all of those kind of things perhaps you know in the same proportion of what and uh, formal sectors you know like employee you know a formal employee actually receives right so that kind of person is going to get impacted and system won't even come to know right so that's a very disastrous situation like you know how to take call how to take you know like those numbers you know, like how many people are you know like impacted okay and what is the extent of their impact you know what nature of work they have been doing you know and all of those details right so it's a another catastrophic situation to you know like a uh, uh, go behind you know for fact finding of you know like a such a, you know like a representation of the you know like a community right these people group of people and 1.6 billion of you know like a such you know like a people if you see see the number you know out of 8 you know like a billion total you know like a population 1.6 you know it's a huge you know like a number you know close to uh, like it's, it's around you know like a 20 percent you know one you know one one fifth of uh, you know like the whole tourism is facing unprecedented challenges one of the most you know like a worst hit uh, you know like a industrial you know like a sectors as one sector tourism sector international tourist arrivals with covid 19 2020 scenario minus 850 million minus 1140 million okay less you know like a travels less you know like a people you know like a traveling so it was a sudden you know like a drop to you know like a you know minimal you know like a figures well of course not for tourism but for essential you know like services only travel was allowed right and uh, unfortunately this sector you know got worst hit covid 19 could cause the equivalent of 400 million job losses in second quarter of 2020 okay so even if like uh, the person is a skill ed skilled educated and all of that you know there is a chance that uh, such you know like a catastrophe is disasters you know may pose a threat to their job security so <clears throat> what it says promote sustained inclusive and sustainable economy growth full and productive employment and decent work for all seven percent sustained per capita economy growth in particular at least seven percent gross domestic product per year in least developed countries achieve higher level of economic productivity through diversification that's where this term you know like it comes i'll explain technological upgrading and innovation well what is diversification so if you see some small countries i'll take uh, you know again the name of our friendly neighbor sri lanka okay Sri Lanka is a relatively, you know, like a smaller in size country compared to a country, you know, like uh, India and you know, others. Okay. Uh, it has a limited number of, uh, you know, like uh, resources which are generally available. Okay. And the possibility is what can be done because in respect to the population, you know, what industry may actually uh, uh, prove, you know, like uh, uh, sustainable over time. For example, uh, if I take the name of automobile, you know, like a uh, uh, sector, you know, like a so, you know, like a fabrication and manufacturing facilities for automobile, you know, it requires, you know, like a constant, uh, constant, you know, like a market where you can sell your vehicles, right? And if those many people are not available in the country, that you can maintain a sustained, you know, like and continuous demand of automobile in the market, how are you going to? have automobile you know manufacturing uh, you know like a units in your country okay this is one of them you know, like a driving regions that you know like sri lanka majorly imports you know like automobile you know like from other countries including india and many others right so by importing actually you know like a, a, for taxes right international duties right and uh, 
the you know like a indirect you know transportation charges like you know like secondary transportation charges and all of those if you keep adding keep adding keep adding you know there are a lot of you know like a things which come in between before the product reaches to the end customer in, in, in uh, Sri Lanka and the cost of per vehicle actually becomes very high okay so I am not going into the you know like a pricing of those vehicles maybe you can check separately but the vehicles you know uh, available in India and vehicles you know like a similar type of vehicle available in Sri Lanka you know there is a huge you know like a price gap you know Sri Lanka's you know like vehicles are highly priced okay and so on so diversification actually is a, a tool you know through which you can make yourself less dependent on just one sector like while, while, while you know like tourism is one of the you know like a very uh, strong you know like uh, sectors you know for Sri Lanka you know highly dependent it earns you know the the largest you know, share of GDP actually comes from this and all right but in the event of uh, you know like a COVID you know it was one of the you know, like worst Im impacted right so when this got actually impacted the whole country's economy got impacted right so you would not definitely not want that you know to repeat again and that's where you know you need to keep your dependence in check on just one sector Right. So that is diversification. If you have you know, like many other sectors also, okay. So your dependence actually gets you know like a shared on these you know in some you know like a proportions, okay. And depending upon if for example if few comes into the you know like a vulnerability wala you know like a uh, you know like a, a catch, okay. Rest you know are still there standing you know to safeguard the you know like a remainder of the economy. Right, so it, it doesn't you know creates a, you know like a kind of a collapsing situation where the whole country actually becomes vulnerable. Right, so that's diversification. It applies in the event of uh, an individual also. Like you know, mostly people are either employed or in business or in agriculture, farming or other you know, like sort of things. Okay, so relying on just one in invent of any you know like a such you know like eventuality you know puts you in a vulnerable situation. Right, so one should have you know like a thinking for diversification like how diversification can be done and what can be you know like done to safeguard you know the overall interest of the entity right yeah <clears throat> protect labor rights promote safe and secure working environment eradicate forced labor you know earlier it used to be well yeah gradually it is declining okay uh, modern slavery and human trafficking yeah but, but still you know like these things are very much prevalent, pre prevalent and uh, I think in the recent decades this has increased this has gone up okay so th there should be a very strict you know like a check on these because you know uh, the direct impacting thing is the you know like a women and children and uh, it's, it's a case of you know like a severe you know like a situations in the human rights Promote development oriented policies and encourage the formalization of growth of micro, small and medium sized enterprises and SMEs, right. So encourage them because these actually bulk if you see is the major constituent of the you know, industrial sector, you know, a huge number of uh, companies they belong to this sector, you know, except a few which are you know, like a top tier, you know, like a companies, you know, and they are you know, like a uh, categorized as large scale companies or very large scale, you know, like a companies and organizations enterprises by 2030 achieve full productive employment for all women men young people and person with disabilities so that every categories people you know their interests are taken care of by 2030 reduce the proportion of youth you know not in employment education or training so we saw initially this number you know like must go down you know people should be you know like brought to their proper places where they can engage themselves aid for trade increase aid for trade support in developing countries they need the more help okay and their help you know must be diverted to those countries by 2020 develop and operationalize the global strategy for youth employment and implement global job pact for the international labor organization so yeah so in the event of you know like a job losses you know for some region you know these interest you know the people's you know like interest you know must be taken care of 